Welcome to Brockton Community Access's coverage of election 2015. Today we're here with the two candidates for Ward 4 School Committee uh, to replace Pat Patricia Joyce who's leaving the school committee after serving for quite a while. We have Brett Gormley in studio and Milton Montero in studio, so two new candidates for the Ward 4 School Committee seat. We're going to start with opening statements and we're going to go in the order of the ballot and then we'll reverse it at the other end. We're going to start with uh, Brett Gormley for one minute. Brett. All right. Hello, and thank you, Brockton Cable Access, for providing us with this opportunity. Throughout the race, I'm asked over and over again why I'm doing this. There's really one reason. I love our school system. The school system has given me great opportunities, has inspired me to dedicate my life to education and working with children. This passion was encouraged by my teachers, coaches, family, and mentors in Brockton. Through my work as a coach and educator in the city, I've gotten to know so many of my fellow Brocktonians and made a name for myself as someone who truly cares about Brockton and all of its people. From the time I entered the school system in 1985 to now, the city has changed, but the spirit hasn't. We are a gateway city, and we've always had to work with different people, and we've always worked together, and we've done it well. I want to keep that tradition alive. I'd be honored to have your vote on November 3rd. Thank you. Uh, Nilton, you have a minute as well. Uh, hello, Mark. Um, hello, Gormley, and the viewers who are watching us uh, today. Uh, my name is Nilton Montero. I came to this country 16 years ago, and I made Brockton my home. Uh, the reason why I'm, I'm running is because I'm a proud of the Brockton Pub School System. I work as a mentor, a teacher assistant at North Middle School at B.B. Russell. I was a specific teacher, uh, teacher at Brockton High, and also I'm a parent. I'm very involved uh, uh, with uh, my kids uh, uh, in their schools. I'm also a, a Brocktonian that love uh, the city. Uh, one of the main reasons is that I want to uh, bring uh, uh, and improve our school system where every child has uh, the same opportunity to succeed. I'm married, I have twin boys, and I'm a state investigator, and I've been uh, working in the city uh, for the past uh, uh, 10, 15 years. Perfect. You guys uh, following all my time cues. I appreciate it. We'll have plenty of time to talk about this. Um, okay, so what I'll do now is I'll reverse that order, and we'll go back and forth just to make sure everybody's treated fairly. I want to know what unique qualifications you have to be a member of the school committee. You both have an educational background. If you have something different to bring to the table, or maybe that's it. I'll start with Nilton. Well, um, I believe that uh, the passion uh, to serve other people, uh, that's one of the great uh, qualifications because uh, being part of the school community, you are not represent yourself, but you, re you are representing the whole community. And I'm here to ask for your vote so we can work together uh, to improve our school system and also be more engaged uh, in, with programs and activities, uh, be part of the community that you uh, represent and the community you are part of. Okay, Brett. Um, I also have a great passion for the community. I think that's why anyone runs. Um, what separates me from many other candidates in this race throughout the city is that I'm an educator. Um, I'm about to finish my master's in education. I'm currently um, an assistant principal at the school I work at and I've taught. Um, I have a great knowledge of schools, school systems, classes. If you're a parent and you call me and you have a question about a student, um, of yours who's special needs or EL. I'm very qualified to answer those questions and advocate for you because that's why we're really here. We're here to advocate for your needs and the needs of the city. And that perspective that I bring of, of an educator and as a parent, I'm a parent of two girls who go to the Davis School, um, that is my unique qualification. Okay, next up, um, over the course of time, um, every year there are budgetary issues that come into play. Uh, this past year, uh, under the teacher's contract by the 15th of May, teachers get their pink slips if there aren't enough school resources while the budget process is in play. Um, in past years, the monies have been restored and almost all of the positions were put back in. This year, that wasn't the case. Um, talk about the school budget and your perspective on it and what you would do Given your backgrounds, both of you, uh, what would be your priorities with the school budget? Uh, we'll start with Brett first. My priority is always who is in front of the student. Teachers should be first in line to keep their jobs. Um, this past budget cycle, 
there was an administrative seat added. Um, that was something that I really was not happy about. I have a few friends who lost their jobs. Having worked in the system pretty recently, I'm still connected to a lot of people there. And I got to see firsthand um, what it's like to get laid off when you have a family um, and when you have someone to, to support. It's terrible. Um, and it's mostly young people. So I think that we need to look at anything that will keep the system going, but we need to keep people in front of the students, and that's the most important thing. As a teacher, I know teaching a class of any more than 25 students is very hard. Um, and right now we have about 10 more students in each class um, than we can probably handle. That's going to affect every student in that classroom. Okay, Nelton, same question about budget and budget priorities. What have you seen, you know, being a parent of two children? Uh, well, it, it is a sad story uh, to uh, see a teacher uh, receive a, pay, a pink slip because uh, we don't have uh, enough uh, fund uh, to pay their salary. So uh, I believe that uh, we have to uh, look around the system. There's some, there's some programs that are not working. Uh, usually I said that we have to uh, use uh, every resource uh, that is out there. Sometimes we have to consolidate, we have to consolidate. We have to request more funding uh, 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 to, from the state. We have our delegation, our state delegation. We have to work together with them, so get more funding. Uh, if it is that it's not, it's not possible, find a way. If there is a way, of course, there's going to be a will. I know over the past uh, uh, year it's been so uh, hard for our school uh, system because of the budget, but it's something we can work together. It's kind of hard, but it's possible if we all want to. Okay, I'm going to keep with the same issue in terms of the budget and kind of flip it around a little bit. Um, I, one of you mentioned about the administrative position. Um, is it top heavy with administration? Is it just about right? Is there anything that you would do different? You get to look at that budget and decide and come up with the priorities. So I will start uh, with Brett on that. Um, well, as you know, Mark, we are not allowed to add in positions or um, programs into the budget. We are allowed to take them away. Um, and one thing that I can do as somebody who's an educator and involved in education is look at a budget and see what is actually there and know what each position does. Um, and I have a lot of friends in the system at many different levels, so I do know that there are some administrative positions that we could probably do without. Um, I don't know how much, but I, my estimate has been probably around half a million to a million dollars of wasted administrative salaries. Um, I think that we need to look at that and we need to really look at what our priorities are. And I feel like having people in front of children is the real priority for me. Okay, Nilton, same question about priorities in the budget, administrative top heavy or, or just right? Well, as I said, we have to uh, uh, look in the budget every line and, and see what's there. Uh, and if it is there some uh, uh, position, they're just there, but are they important or not? Sometimes we, yes, we have to prioritize uh, uh, some position because we are in a tough uh, situation. Uh, if there are uh, some uh, position that need to be eliminated, why not? So something you have to uh, work together and see what is there and what needs to be cut. If, if it is going to impact or not, or if it's something that, it's something that uh, uh, we have to. But uh, as again, we have to uh, uh, look at the budget uh, line by line and to what is there and, uh, and uh, see if uh, something needs to be cut. Of course, if we, if we, have, if we have to, uh, there's no other way. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to switch it around. It'll be Nilton first and then Brett. But um, City of Brockton, the school committee, is actually contemplating a lawsuit. Um, in the past, uh, education reform started here in Brockton, all the way back to the Ed Reform 1993. Different names, different school committee members, different people on the lawsuit. I don't know who will be named for this time. Good idea or bad idea? Nilton first. Well, I would say that it's a bad idea. Yes. Because uh, for the past uh, uh, years, so I believe that it is something uh, we have to uh, check and see, but uh, I, it's something I don't believe. Okay. Um, Brett? Um, I think it's a good idea, and it's the only recourse that the state has given us. Um, over the past several years, we've lost about $10 million in Chapter 70 funding, and our budget shortfall has been about $10 million over the last several years. So the state puts a lot of mandates on us to educate um, special needs students, English language learners, um, and several other, other students who require extra services, yet they don't fund us properly to make those things happen. Um, and the state has an obligation, and according to the Constitution, to cherish every child. And I don't believe that the state is living up to that. 
Um, in Brockton and other gateway cities, we really have a problem where our tax base isn't great. It's, it's shrinking in some places. Um, and the state needs to help us out if they're going to put these mandates on us. Okay, let's talk about the mandates. Let's talk about special ed. Um, bilingual really isn't a mandate, but we're a diverse city. Okay, and uh, when the law changed back, I don't know, it's probably close to eight or ten years ago that it didn't mandate it, what do you do when people come here and they don't speak another language? Are we doing the right job with the resources we have, both with bilingual and special ed? I'll start with you, Brett. Um, I believe that we need to educate everybody who walks through the door the, as best we can. So if we need to have a program, we have a program. Um, and the state has required us to do that. And currently I work with um, a pretty large SEI population of students who speak Spanish. Um, and I've taught those students and they absolutely need these programs and we do need to fund these programs. At the same time, um, the program as the state has it is not great. Uh, many of the teachers that I work with they don't like how it's set up and they don't feel the freedom to teach the children that are in front of them. And as a teacher, you want to be able to have the, te the freedom to teach the students that are there in front of you. You may have um, students who are English language learners who are different levels. There's level one through five. Um, and it's illegal to have um, students who are uh, a level apart in the same classroom. So they really hamstring um, school systems with that. And I think that that's something that um, I would like to advocate to change if I am elected with the state delegation. Okay, Nilton, same question. Oh, well, um, when I first came here, I didn't speak any uh, language, and bilingual uh, program was a resource. It uh, was a great resource. It's the reason why I'm here today because of the bilingual program. Well, of course, there is a, 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 a way uh, to uh, modify the system if it is possible. Yes, but when it comes to spe uh, special needs, uh, of course, we need to provide service for uh, uh, those people. Uh, they deserve uh, uh, our help, and uh, sometimes that's the only help uh, they'll get. And I'm I strongly uh, believe that. Uh, a bilingual program is something very important because we are a diverse uh, uh, city, have main uh, students from different countries and cultural backgrounds. So this is something that uh, will help them to succeed. And uh, I'm part, I'm a product of that program because the reason I'm here today is because that program helped me uh, to uh, learn English and then finish my uh, high school diploma and went to college. Okay, um, let's talk a little bit about um, it, when we're talking about scarce resources, um, this week up on Beacon Hill, we're, we're just under, I think it's three weeks to the election. Um, the governor of the Commonwealth, Charlie Baker, is talking about um, legislative hearings to lift the cap on charter schools in Brockton. Um, your position on charter schools, pro or con, and how they help or hurt the city school system. So I'll start with Nilton. Welcome to charter school. Uh, usually, uh, uh some uh, cities, uh, they are so underperformed. Uh, uh, their public school systems has so much problems. And with charter school, it helps. But if, if we have a strong uh, uh, school system where every student has an opportunity to exceed, opportunity to learn, I don't think so. We need a charter school. But if it is the case where uh, the system uh, is not uh, well equipped, uh, it doesn't have enough resource, and the school doesn't provide opportunity to the kids. I believe that a uh, charter school is, is another uh, way uh, for other students uh, to uh, uh, succeed. If we have a good school system, um, I don't, uh, I disagree with that. But if in the case that uh, uh, the system is poorly uh, managed and funded, I uh, do uh, believe that uh, uh, it is a good uh, thing for the city or the town. Right. Um, I absolutely do not think that we need a charter school or that any other city in this uh, state needs a charter school. Um, charter schools are funded by public money um, and they're not held accountable the way that our schools are. So you're sending your tax dollars to an organization that you have no say to. And to me that's the great thing about this country. We have a school system that is represented by a school board or a school committee in most towns. And without that voice, um, this, the, the community doesn't have as much of a say. Um, and also, charter schools aren't all they cra they're cracked up to be, I'll tell you. Um, I work in Boston, and there are a lot of charter schools in, in the city, and um, oftentimes at the beginning of the school year, especially this school year, we've received a lot of students who were asked to leave the charter school for whatever reason. Um, and mostly I've seen it um, 
for some type of behavioral issue. And I get the student after a couple months, I see the student, I say, this student is a behavioral issue. And I look at their test scores and guess what? Their test scores aren't adding up to what they want. Um, and that is not education. In the public school system, we're forced, or we're honored really, to educate every student. And I don't see that happening with charter schools. I had a student come to me recently who is a special needs student and their IEP or individual education plan was not written well. And that student did not receive the education that he should have from a charter school. Okay, um, in Brockton over the course of time, I'm sure um, you've read in the news that there were some parents of students that accused uh, the school system of discriminatory practices. And there were various meetings that were held. Uh, the school committee has a democratic procedure in process where there's a hearing of visitors and people can speak to them. Some of the concerns were public, some of the concerns were, were private. Um, I guess my question is, do you feel that um, the school committee who was uh, vehemently denied that there are any discriminatory practices in place, do you agree with them or do you disagree with them? What have you heard from the people of, as you've been going out and talking to uh, the folks in the community? I'll start with Brett. Um, well, I, I was actually there that night at that meeting and um, I knew some of the students from my time uh, working at Brockton High. And after the meeting, I had a chance to meet with um, Bradley Soufran, who was one of the leaders. And um, I coached Bradley in football for a little while. And Bradley was so eloquent uh, that I reached out to him and um, talked to him. And he had some valid concerns. Um, the numbers didn't look well. Um, and I found out, too, through talking to him. I was one of the only people who were involved in the school system that had reached out to him. And that was very disappointing. Um, I think that in that case, that what I observed as, an edu as a staff member up there um, was that the discipline system isn't evenly enforced and some of the things that are enforced, um, they're not um, enforced properly. Uh, for example, I found out from talking to a teacher that I know that they were told to just mark students, students tardy for class and not let them know. And I knew that as an educator up there, I had students who would get suspended for a day and they didn't really understand how it had happened. And that's one of the, the things that happened. So if you don't have a parent advocating for you and getting suspended all the time, that can be really tough. And, and students who are from a, a poor background or an undereducated background really don't have that uh, advocation at home. Okay, I'm going to give you a minute, 15, Nelton, to respond to that. Well, uh, s some of those allegations, you know, there, there are allegations. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we have to uh, investigate. And uh, I believe that there's some practice at uh, some schools that they're not uh, uh, the way they're supposed to be. I remember when I was at Brockton High, when it comes to demerit the systems, there were some kids there, so uh, they were sent to the office because the teacher didn't like them. They go to the office, administrator know them, oh, you again, seven or what, 14 demerits. Sometimes they don't hear the students. And I feel that, that yes, there, uh, there was some preference there. Sometimes other students, uh, they go to the office for the same reason, so nothing happened. And I, I was there as a student. And even when I was an educator at B.B. Russell, the, the kids, uh, uh, they were expelled or suspended uh, from the Brockton Public uh, School when they go to uh, that alternative program. Most of them didn't know why they were there. Uh, even the parents that don't know. Uh, uh, again, we have to educate our, our parents and to, then the kids they need to be informed of why they'll be suspended, why uh, this is happening. I think the education is very key there to uh, uh, inform uh, what's going on. Thank you both. Okay, um, before we started this forum, I, I, I talked about the ground rules and I gave you folks a choice yeah. whether you wanted to ask each other a question. So I'm gonna let you, you both agree and I'm going to let you do that. So I will start first with Milton asking Brett a question. So my, my question to you. So I, I, um, I know that uh, you were uh, um, uh, working, uh, was, you were uh, an employee of the Brockton Public School System, then you left. So why is the reason you left the uh, Brockton Public School System, went to another one, and now you're back to uh, running for school uh, commuter? So just want to know what were the reasons? Good question. Um, I actually tried for two years to get a job in the Brockton Public School System. And um, being a phys ed teacher, there aren't a ton of jobs every year. So um, I wasn't able to get one. Um, but I could have came back last year, but I knew I'd get laid off. Um, and that's something that I can't afford. Like you, I have two kids and I have a mortgage and I have bills to pay. And um, those things were a huge consideration for me. And my heart is here. And it's really tough for me to be in Boston. Um, well, I, knowing that I could have come back. But this is part of the reason I ran. 
it's a way for me to stay connected to the school system, a uh, school system that I really love and that's given me and my family a great opportunity in life. And um, if, if uh, the opportunity had presented itself before I was uh, able to establish myself in my school, I would have come back. Um, but it was just not a great choice for me and my family. Okay, now, Brett, you get to ask Milton a question, and I appreciate you both being open to do this. It's, it, it, it shows the a testimony to both of you. Thanks. Um, my question to you is, there are several programs cut every, the past few years um, because of the budget. Um, and some were added back in. Middle school sports was added back in, and I know some people aren't happy about that because there were so many teachers laid off. When presented with a choice, what programs do you think that you would uh, be willing to cut? Well, it's kind of tough uh, when uh, we uh, come uh, uh, to uh, cut programs. I remember when, when I, was, I was in uh, high school, we have a sport that uh, was available to every student there. Uh, it was very important uh, for students, and we were so we had so much fun uh, attending different sports and also arts, uh, uh, music. Because there's some kids they're so talented and they're so creative when it comes to other uh, like sport or music or art, and. Uh, when you cut those programs, uh, then uh, what are the kids going to do after school? If they are on the street, they have nothing to do. Sometimes we ask parents, uh, what's, uh, what's, what's going on with your kids? Or they're bored, there's nothing to do. But at the same time, when you have programs after school like that, you prevent crime. We know that uh, the problem our, our city is facing right now, uh, all these uh, uh, crimes, but uh, it's something you have to start with the programs at school. They're like after school programs, a sport. I know uh, middle school, my nephew, uh, he goes to uh, South Middle School. He's so happy because the, the sport came back. He goes in the morning and the afternoon because he loves uh, to, uh, to play sport. I believe that every student in our school system loves to do something extracurricular. And uh, if we have those programs uh, back, so they will alleviate and help those kids and also prevent crime. Okay, I'm going to ask you both. Um, we have uh, about eight minutes left, something like that. Okay, quick questions um, at this point. Um, Park, Common Core, MCAS. I got them all sandwiched together in one question. I'm trying to trim it to a minute answer. Um, your thoughts on standardized testing, uh, good or bad for Brockton and change or not? How's that? We'll start with Brett. Um, so I, I'm, I'm not a fan of standardized testing. I believe that there is a place for it, but our current system is very flawed. Um, it's what's known as a test and punish system. Um, and it really only hurts urban communities. Um, places like Brockton, we have a lot of students who are from ed backgrounds where English isn't the first language and where um, you know, that maybe mom and dad are working a lot, not able to help with homework because, you know, that's the situation they're in. Many different things bring us to, to these scores um, where the suburbs don't have to face that. So it, you don't see towns like Wellesley having to deal with uh, turnaround schools because the, the family involvement is much different. Um, but as you've seen in Brockton, our scores improve as the students get older, and that's really what you want to see. So it is good to, to have a measuring stick, um, but to penalize schools and systems the way that we do, um, for example, I know uh, the school next door to mine in, in, in Boston was a level five school and they changed the entire staff. And I saw the students that I knew over there and they were devastated that they lost a lot of the teachers that they cared about. So I'm not a fan of um, Park or Common Core. Um, I could go on and on about that, but I guess I'm being told to wrap up. <laughs> That's a whole nother half an hour. <laughs> exactly. Okay, Milton? Well, that is something that we agree uh, upon on uh, because uh, Yes, our school system, is, uh, we, we need a lot to improve, and uh, yes, uh, our uh, city is so diverse, uh, people from different countries and backgrounds, which English is not their first language, and parents, most of them they don't speak uh, English, it's, it's a little bit hard for them uh, to go in and help their kids with the homework. And uh, I remember when I was in, uh, in high school, I, I was here for only two years, so it would have made sense for me to go and uh, take MCAS or other uh, standardized tests, uh, because uh, my English wasn't that great, uh, so when I'm going to take a test compared to uh, my fellow students who were born here, who went to school here, so it'll be uh, tough uh, uh, for me to pass it. And uh, yes, it's, there's a way uh, to uh, measure uh, student success. I believe that uh, those tests is, uh, is not the, uh, uh, the number one priority. And if you realize that some schools uh, right now, some college, they don't use SAT anymore because they believe it's not uh, the right way to measure the student success. Okay, thank you. I'm going to, um, what do we, we have about four minutes, 
left. So I'm going to wrap this into the closing, okay? I want, I'm sure you have a prepared statement, or maybe you've listened to the whole thing and you've kind of changed your mind, but I want you to wrap this into your closing statement. Uh, the number one thing that you bring to the table to get elected to the Brockton School mm -hmm. Committee, and the order for this one is Nilton first, and then Brett, and I'll give you up to a minute and a half. Well, uh, the reason why I'm, I'm running is very simple. I'm a product of Brockton Public School System. I was an educator and I'm a parent. I'm so concerned about the education in our city and I'm here to give it back. I got so much from the city and now is my time to give back to other students. I want every student in this city to succeed, to have an opportunity uh, to have a great uh, education because you know education is key. Education is power. When you are educated, uh, you do well in life. That's uh, my goals. That's why I'm, I'm running. I want to bring uh, sport, art, and music program to every single level of education in our city. I know middle school got sport back. I want other schools, uh, uh, high school and elementary, to get the same opportunity. I want to uh, bring a uh, tutoring program to our uh, kids. We have college around this area. We have Bridgewater State. We have Stonehill. And we have Massachusetts Community College. We, I want to uh, engage the students uh, of, of this institution to come to our public school system and help our kids with their homeworks, with any extra curricular activity. That's the reason why I'm running. And I'm asking for your vote on November 3rd. Please vote Milton Montero School Committee uh, Award for. Thank you. Thank you, Nilton. Uh, Brett. Okay, so my unique qualification, as I've said a few times, is I'm an educator. Um, not only am I an educator, I've been an educator in the city, and I've lived in the city my entire life. Um, my father is also a teacher at the high school, and my grandmother just retired as a para. So this system is something that I know like the back of my hand. Um, and I'm able to understand all the issues and advocate for everybody in my ward no matter what the issue is. Um, I advocate for students every day of my life. Um, so I'd like to thank Mark in Brockton Cable Access for this opportunity again. And I'm asking for your vote on November 3rd, not because I want to be an elected official, but because I want to work on behalf of our children. That's all I've ever wanted to do. We're the butt of people's jokes often, and that greatly offends me. I love this city. We have a great city full of great people. We have people from all over the world, and we've been able to maintain one of the finest systems in Massachusetts. How do we do that? We do that through hard work and dedication. I'm a hard worker and I'm dedicated. I know the school system. I'm now ending my fifth year of uh, as an educator and in a few months I'll uh, have my master's degree. I will not need a few months to learn. I know, I live this every day. I'd be honored to have your vote on November 3rd. Thank you. Well, I think uh, the Voters Award 4 have two great choices for our school committee uh, to follow in uh, Patricia Joyce's footsteps. I um, want to thank you both for being here, and I want to thank our viewers for watching to educate yourselves more about your choices in this upcoming November 3rd election. Stay tuned for Brockton Community Access. You'll have election results and all the candidates that you ever wanted to see. Thanks for joining us.